Hey guys, I wanted to come on before I go out for a walk and I wanted to just talk a little bit about this concept, this idea, this phrase or whatever, however you want to look at it, uh, of the light of the world. And it's something that a lot of us have heard referred to certain religious narratives. Um, this idea of the light of the world and it goes by a couple of different names and then there's other religions that don't align with that particular narrative per se, but yet they have their own perspective on the force or the source that is behind all of reality and its role. Because that's really important when you start getting into what is what is the role of it? Like what is what is the role? Is it truly behind everything? Or is there another force that's like cuckoo crazy, just like going all over the place, how to get there, how, why, who allowed it, what allowed it? Like it gets into this really, uh, you know, really, really dark space and it can take you down many, many, many rabbit holes. There is this concept of the light of the world. And I wanted to just share a little bit about some experiences that I've had with this concept, with this term. And I've talked in other videos quite a bit actually about when I was a child and how I knew that the religious narrative was false and I knew that it was a fraud and I used to get in trouble for saying so in CCD. I just knew, you know, I absolutely knew and I always had this deeper sense that it was all completely backwards, that it was reversed, upside down, inside out. It was completely not just wrong, that it was completely uh, twisted. So the light of the world is not outside of us. It is not a being outside of us that we have to accept in us. The light of the world is already in us. It's already within us. This is very ancient. This is an ancient, ancient concept. It's just, I was a child, so I had no idea of these ancient concepts. This was just my own internal knowing. And when they would talk about, you know, God and, you know, and I'm like, oh, that's, that's, that's not my God. Like, I can tell you straight up that that is not what I come from. And that is not where I come from. And again, I always knew it. And I was very, very sure of it. Like to the point, I, I mean, to the point of crazy sure. And then of course, life, you grow up, you get older, whatever. And, uh, you know, you try to just muddle through and deal with all of this because you just don't understand but what I found really fascinating is that I've had several experiences in my life that have completely validated this knowing that I have for me, where it has revealed itself to me. And I've talked about this in other videos as well. I've talked about my own experience that I've had. Some would call it an out-of-body experience or... Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you would call it. Um, one of them was a legit near death experience, which is which is nothing like what most people claim. There was no afterlife. There were no loved ones. There was no bright light. There was none of that. None of that. I was the light in the abyss. And it was this moment of instant all knowing all connected, everything and anything, all morphed together. I, 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 I can't even explain it. There actually are no words to define that experience that I had. And it was absolutely life-changing for me, even though my being knew it all along. It just, when you have this experience, it's really brings it into a different space for you. And that happened when um, when I was really, really struggling with my with the chemical pneumonia and the COPD. And I had had a severe episode where I completely tapped out of my body. Uh, and I've talked about that in another video. And what I knew in that moment was that I was I was returning back here and I wasn't done. I was not done and I was not leaving I was not leaving this physical avatar yet. There was there was no way. Um, and and I've had other experiences of that as well. So this is this wasn't the only experience. It was just one of them, because I 
I literally was not breathing. I'm not breathing and I completely passed out. And I've had other experiences, but I was not, not breathing. <laughs> I, I was, I was breathing. Um, and just having that experience. And then I had a dream once about my dad, which I've talked about this, where there was a huge earthquake and everything opened up and everything got was getting sucked into the earth. And then I opened my eyes and I was, it appeared to me kind of like this mountainside or this hillside. And I was there with my dad and there was this incredibly bright light that had this most incredible, again, undefinable feeling that, that, all was just just light and love and and I say light loosely okay but I do mean a physical light like I do I really mean a physical light even though that's probably just the way that I perceive it you know whether that physical light exists or not I don't really know but um it was this this incredibly bright light and my dad was there and I kept saying to him don't you see it don't you see it don't you see it and he was like see what and what was interesting is that there were other people in that dream as well it was like one person trying to show the other person the light like it was almost like the person who couldn't see it was there with somebody who did and they were like helping them helping them to see it helping them to feel it and that was really interesting and that again that was another experience that marked me a lot in that uh that was that was over 25 years ago or maybe 20 years ago yeah maybe 20 years ago over 20 years ago and again, very, very interesting that I have always carried this idea that we are the light, like we are the light and we are part of this light. We are part of this unfathomable force that is about light and love and pureness. And I don't know how the nefarious forces spin off from that and become part of reality and experiences. I don't really know that. Um, but I know that we are having these experiences as light beings coming into these avatars, okay? And, you know, the avatars are important to the degree that it houses us while we're here. Like, this is our, this is our vehicle while we are on this planet. And because our body, you know, is made up of things of the earth, it is what, it is what grounds us to this planet, which is why, the agenda is to synthetically alter us and to create digital cyborgs, robots, okay, instead of real humans. And I've talked about this multiple times in videos about human DNA is organically and naturally being upgraded via the earth and the sun and the energies of this light force, okay? And this is why the agenda is so hellbent and so desperate to try to alter our DNA through their CRISPR technology programs, okay? And they've been doing it a long time, okay? It's just now it's really above ground and they're putting it out there and people are falling for it. People are falling for it. You know, it's one thing if they do it without your knowledge. It's another thing for people to willingly you know, walk up to it and, and get it. It's they're willingly, willingly submitting to the system. Now, some, you know, could argue, well, you know, they're ignorant. It's because they don't know. And to that, I would agree. Yes, they are ignorant and they don't know. But I've always taught my children, ignorance sucks because you will still have to reap the consequences of that ignorance. So, you know, you really have to get in touch with yourself. You don't need to know from your mind, but you sure as hell need to know from your gut and your instincts and your intuition. And even if you don't know anything about CRISPR technology, if your instincts and your intuition are working, it's a fuck no. It is a hardcore fuck no. You just know it. Okay, you just know it. That's the light of you. That is the light of your being. And it only is within you, it's not outside. It is only within you. And it's something that we all have access to. But not everybody is connected to it. Not everybody knows about it. Not everybody is aware 
and not everybody feels it. I just happen to have felt my intuition since I was a very, very, very young child. It's always been very active in me. Does it mean it's always worked 100%? No, I'm part of this matrix, just like everybody else, but it's worked really well. And it's really helped me to navigate through a lot of shit. And now that all of this stuff is coming down, you know, it's like I'm, I'm seeing things so much more clearly around me. And, you know, one of the things that I used to feel was part of why I came was to kind of like help wake people up. And now I realize that that may be partially true, but it's because of my being. It's not because of stuff I say or do or whatever. It's just because of my being. Because you can't wake people up with words. You can't wake people up with with you know, trying to help them. It just it doesn't work that way. And I've had my head smashed into the cement wall many, many, many times discovering this. And it was through the whole uh, last five years or so that I really discovered very powerfully and very strongly that you cannot wake people up. We, we, we do not have that power to wake people up. That is an inside job. But what we can do is we can just continue to be us, to speak our truth, to shine our light, to, to be in that person's presence, but still holding and maintaining our authenticity and our integrity without pretending, without allowing ourselves to shrink without allowing ourselves to go dim. Now that doesn't mean we have to be, you know, you know, so in their face that they're, you know, no, that you don't need to do that. You just you just need to to calmly and peaceably be you. And I've learned that I can speak my truth in a way without trying to convince, without trying to you know, I just just speak my truth. And I've talked about this in a video a little while ago how uh, there's two people in my neighborhood. Actually, it's it's up a little bit. So it's not like my direct neighborhood, but it's like right over there. And I've met two people recently from that neighborhood. And both of these people, I decided to just truly and completely be honest. And um, every question that they asked me, I would answer honestly. And I wouldn't hold back. <laughs> and so I did it. And interestingly enough, one woman... Um, has made no effort or no attempt to stay in my life. And the other woman has actually made a very strong attempt to stay in my life to the point where she saw me walking, uh, cause I walk a lot. And she saw me walking past her house one day and she literally came over and was like, Hey, come over here. And, um, basically invited me into her life, into her, into her space and made it clear to me that, that she wanted a relationship with me. And again, this is where it really it really starts to get intense now because being truthful and honest we are going to lose we're going to lose people we're going to have people that are going to be like you're a freak and I want nothing to do with you or you're just too much for me or whatever but then you're going to get people that are really ready because these are people that are waking up these are people that are really in touch with themselves and they're starting to come alive and you know they're they're feeling your energy and it's palpable for them and they want that in their life because it helps remind them that that they they have this too. So this is this is where it's going. And I mean, she's been an incredible benefit in my own life too. I don't mean to say that it's a mutual. It is absolutely mutual. I don't mean to say that, you know, I'm here to like that's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying that because I am so honest and truthful and authentic that people really feel that. And some people don't like it. And some people really like it. So it's important that we that we honor that authentic place within us. And I've noticed, you know, I've always noticed it in my life, but I've noticed it even more recently is, you know, the the moving away of certain people and the moving in of others. And, you know, some people that were in are now out and some people, you know, that were out are now in. And it's just very interesting how life moves you around based on, how authentic are you being with yourself? And that's, you know, that's something that really has like knocked me in the head recently is that our life is really a reflection of how authentic we are. How authentic are we? 
How authentic are we? And that's, you know, it doesn't mean bad shit's not going to happen. It doesn't mean that, you know, we're always going to be in like this state of bliss or whatever. I mean, that's just fantasy land and that's just not earth reality. It's just not how it operates. But when you are really, really authentic, your life is completely different. And I am talking radically and completely different than when you're not authentic or when you're only authentic some of the time with some people because you think they can handle it. But when you are authentic all the time, your life really changes. It really does. And it's really just simple to see why, right? It's simple to see why. You meet someone, you speak your truth, that's gonna go one of two ways. They're gonna be like, I need to get away from this person. I want more of this person in my life. Or it's just kind of neutral because they're just they're just kind of flatlined and they're just like, mm -mm -mm, you know, whatever. So again, it's very, very interesting. And I've talked about how me deciding to be really authentic with somebody that I met quite a few years ago, two years ago now, maybe even three, I don't know, time's flying. And I decided to just be completely honest and authentic. And she has remained in my life and is now, you know, I consider her one of my best friends. And it's really interesting because had I had not done that, I don't know that that would have happened. So again, I, you know, Life is really, really interesting. But again, I did want to just mention this whole concept of light of the world. We are the light. We are lighting this world up. And not everybody wants that light. Not everybody wants it, feels it, feels connected to it. Some people are so inundated with this, this nefarious force that they've already been overtaken by it. And we're not saving them. Okay, we're not going to save them. And what do they need to be saved from anyway? Most people moving in that direction like it. They like it. They want it. They, they're they going for it. They're willingly complying. Okay, so we cannot feel sorry for them. We cannot feel bad. It was not to say that we can't have compassion because they don't know about their own inner light. But, you know, they're choosing it. And, we, you know, there's nothing that we are capable of doing to get them to want what we want. And that was probably the hardest lesson of my life is to understand that most people don't want what I want. They just don't want it. And this is why I've always said, you know, how can we share a world with people who want completely opposite things? Because what happens? Does the majority rule? Does the majority get what they want? So the majority of people that want what we don't want, they get what they want but we don't get what we want. How does that work? How does that factor in? So it occurred to me many, many years ago when I had an experience that, that anchored me into my being is that we are going to get a chance to get what we want and we are going to get a chance to live in a reality that matches us, that matches the light of our being the authenticity of our being and others who share that. And I'm not saying it will be utopia because that's that doesn't exist. That's part of that's part of the agenda that somehow we're going to create utopia for everybody in these smart cities, right? It doesn't exist. But what can exist and what is beginning to to take up more space is when humanity is on board with one another, where we start to really connect with one another at a very deep, deep level, where nobody would ever think of harming another person or deceiving another person or manipulating another person, harming another person in any way. It just wouldn't even come into somebody's consciousness. This wouldn't even be there. We deserve to live in that reality. We deserve that. We deserve that. Good people don't do horrible things. When they are conscious and aware of their own inner light and their own inner being. Good people, I mean nice people, meaning they're nice can be led to do very terrible things because they're not connected to their light. They're not connected to their inner being. They're not connected to the truth 
of who they really are and their source. They're not, they're disconnected. They're connected to something fake and artificial. And a lot of people think they're good, that they are really moving in a very dangerous, dark path. But again, they want it. They want it. There's lots of people that want to be a slave. They enjoy being a slave. I don't understand it, but they enjoy it. They enjoy having a master to worship and bow, bow down to. They enjoy it. They love it. It feeds them because their light is so dim. Their inner light is so dim that they, they, they feel that this uplifts them. They feel that this is what gives them life. And it's actually the furthest thing from the truth. That's a parasite. It's living off you. It's feeding off you. It's actually stealing your light. The part of your light that you don't, you don't even know exists. You don't pay attention to. But this force knows it. And this force comes in and starts to harvest your light. You know, evasion of the body snatchers and all of these dystopian books and movies about harvesting humans, right? And I think the best movie that depicts this is, uh, oh my gosh, it was, they were the little Muppets, The Dark Crystal, The Dark Crystal. For those of you who uh, never saw that movie, it's, um, they legit are harvesting their light. They're harvesting their light. They're harvesting the little Muppet critters, their inner light. They're literally hooking them up to a machine, sticking this thing on their head and harvesting their light out of their being, harvesting it. They were showing us. They were showing us. Like, it's so in our face. It's so in our face. And there's actually been a lot of movies that have been showing us all along what they're doing. And people are just not connected enough to see it. Whereas I'm that person who, you know, my kids are watching the movie and I'm like, I'm like, why am I letting my kid watch this movie? Like, why? But of course, it's a great teaching, you know, because I don't know what the movie is when they watch it. Because I don't really pay attention to that stuff. But then I'm watching it and I'm like, oh my gosh. And of course, I'm talking to my kids about it. I'm like, you know, they're really doing this. You know, this is what they're really doing to humans. You know, we have an inner light and they're trying to steal it. And, you know, so my kids have always known this. My kids have always understood it. And trust me, it doesn't make raising them easier. And then as they get older, a lot of times they just don't even want to like, uh, you know, um, but then they, they come back to it. They come back to it. And I talk a lot about this stuff with my kids, especially now, because they're at that age where they're going to be having to make decisions for their own lives. And, you know, they're really going to need to be connected to their inner light. And, you know, it's very, very interesting. So I just wanted to mention quickly that it's no secret that, you know, really follow too many people. There's two people that I will listen to and I don't take anything at, you know, at a hundred percent face value. Um, you know, just because somebody that I like says something doesn't mean that I'm on board with it. Right. There's, there's some things that, that these people say that I'm not necessarily aligned with. It just doesn't, doesn't jive with me. And I don't, I don't abandon that because I'm like, Oh, I really like a lot of these things that you say. So therefore, everything you say must be true. No, they're still human vehicles, okay? They're still in an avatar. And even though they might be bringing in this information that is is helping me to kind of expand my own awareness, it doesn't mean that everything that they are pulling in or everything that they're filtering through and, and putting out there is completely accurate for me. Okay, so we need to remember that, that, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to get caught up in thinking that somebody's got your story all together. No, nobody has your story. Only you have your story. And there's certain people that can help share information with us that helps kind of nip and tuck it for us and help us to feel more confident, more validated, more alive. But we should never, ever substitute their thoughts, ideas, beliefs, whatever about things for our own. And again, I'm always willing to hold things like, yeah, that's not vibing with me, but I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hold it because maybe I'm wrong. But usually I'm not. Usually as time goes by, I see that that what I hold, I hold for a reason. Because I don't sit around and try to manipulate with my mind. Ooh, how to make this fit into my... No, it's just this feels really right to me. That does not feel right to me. And I can't necessarily tell you why. Okay, but you know, if, if, if I can give you a reason, 
can go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. You know, these are 10 reasons. Yeah, those are valid. And I'm not saying that they're not valid, but there might be another thing over here where I'm like, mm, what about this? It's again, not vibing. There's just, there's just this thing that's just not, it's not clicking. It's not connecting. It's not making sense to me. Okay. And I guess I'll leave you guys with this. So at the end of the day, we really have to look around and we need to ask ourselves, how is this better? How is this reality better than any other time in history? It's fucking not. It's not. There's still wars going on, still people dying and suffering every day on this planet, still people starving. And because of all the technology and all the access that we have, there's even more crime. There's even more crime. Hideous, horrible crimes that I'm not even going to mention because they make me want to vomit and cry all day, especially involving children. So things aren't better. Okay, things aren't better. You might happen to live in a country where things are a little bit better, but there's still plenty of places on this planet that aren't better at all, okay? And all you need to do is think about what happened in Rwanda back, you know, not all that long ago, and to know that those kinds of things happen all over the globe all the time. Okay, the planet's not better. We've been devolving, humans have been devolving. And I believe this is the snap point. I believe, I believe this is the end of the line. We are phasing out of this reality and we are going to be expressing in a new one. And what happens to those that are clinging to this shitty fucking bullshit? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know with all the dreams and the visions and the paranormal experiences that I've had is it's not coming. It's not coming into this new earth reality. It's not coming into the reality of the light, the new world, paradise on earth, heaven on earth, whatever you want to call it. It's not coming. It's not coming in. Okay. If it is not vibing with the love vibration and the light of the world, this true light of the world, which is within us, it's not coming in. Not going to be coming into the reality. It will be locked out. And this is something that I have sensed and felt so deeply for so long, but I'm not going to lie. I, I've questioned and doubted it a lot because everything around me was just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And you look around, you're like, oh my gosh. But now I realize, yeah, it's because it's dying. Everything around us is dying. People are clinging to it, clinging to it. They won't let go. They won't let go. But in the mean, in the meantime, there's, there's this bushfire being set within us and it's starting to really take up more space in us. And those of us that are relying more on that and less on everything out there are starting to realize that a different reality is possible, something so much better. And it's only gonna happen when humans reconnect with their inner light. So I could keep rambling, but I'll leave you guys with that, all right? Signing out.